they always say that a picture is worth a thousand words and one good video clip developed by real people that get excited and demonstrate their love to our city, to our country, it's the best way, the best way to promote, to promote Jerusalem and Israel. And I'm here because I heard about the competition and I wanted to come and give you a hug for the wonderful job and the idea of having such a contest and promoting Jerusalem and Israel in such a wonderful, wonderful way. If I had to wish one wish tonight, it would be to duplicate these ideas into hundreds and thousands. Since around the world we have over five billion ways of loving the city of Jerusalem, over five billion people around the world care about our city in different ways, in different connectivity, in different ideas, and sharing those ideas is the best way to promote and create a, a better future for ourselves. Mind you that when we talk about Jerusalem, we're talking about a 3,000 year old brand. 3,000 years of investment. And the exposure to the word Jerusalem is practically second to no other brand in the world. I want to, with a few minutes, share with you the philosophy why I believe so many people connect to our city. 3,000 years ago, when our great-great-great-grandparents came from uh, Egypt of, after hundreds of years of slavery, the land of Israel was divided to the different 12 tribes, where each of the tribes had their piece of land, the way they lived, <coughs> except the city of Jerusalem. By design, was built by King David to be between Benjamin and Judah, and it belonged to all tribes. There was not one tribe as a host to all the rest of the tribes which were guests, so that when people came to the gates of our city, they felt a feeling of belonging, a feeling of togetherness. For a thousand years, Jerusalem, the center of the world, was the place where all people came in and out of our city in ways like no other place in the world. There's a very famous phrase in Hebrew, Yerushalayim osa kol Israel chaverim, Jerusalem makes all people, friends, think about that inflow and outflow, that huge masses of millions of people coming every year to praise God in the holy city, but also to meet all the rest of the people from all tribes, Jews and non-Jews alike. There's another phrase I like to quote and give my own expanded interpretation, and that is, Ki mitzion Torah, from Zion, new Torah comes out. The expanded interpretation is not just holiness, but everything that worked in our city, everything that was successful, social, um, economics, anything, of course, uh, holiness, was immediately uh, rippled to the rest of the world. And in many, many ways, so when people came back from Yerushalayim, they came to their tribe, to their country, and everyone used to ask them, what is new in Jerusalem? What works in our city? Because if it works in Jerusalem, it automatically means that it's accepted by all people from all tribes, Jews and non-Jews alike. They all simultaneously go back home and create new de facto standards based on what works in our city. So that power of Jerusalem of 3,000 years ago is not just the past, it's our future. And so when people come and enjoy our city and propagate ideas that work in our country, in our city, like the last, actually, one and a half films I saw, it makes a huge impact around the world. By, almost by design, people always want to hear what's new in our city and accept it with, with open arms. Because if it works here, it has to work everywhere else in the world. Jerusalem is also a place where practically all conflicts in the world reside. And I share with my friends that conflicts in our city, it's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> because it belongs to all tribes, because you have so many different ideologies in our city, 
at any given moment, if all of the different constituencies and different people, tribes, Jews and non-Jews alike, are here present in Yerushalayim, those conflicts are inherent. It's actually another synonym to the same to the to, to the name Jerusalem. So you here you have the city, a place where it belongs to all, where we maintain very strictly freedom of religion, freedom of movement, freedom of press. We have all the conflicts and we understand that we must live within those conflicts and make Jerusalem work for the benefit of the world to enjoy. And when it does work, it automatically means to the rest of the world, hey, look what's happening in the special city, the holy city of Yerushalayim. So when I heard about the competition, and I heard that many people connect to Yerushalayim in different ways, and they are trying and they are expressing their love to the city, and they see so many different views about how to love our city. I felt that it's important that I come here tonight and thank you for the competition, and may this be one or of many, many uh, more uh, ideas and promotions like this. And there's no doubt in my mind that it'll give you folks a big return on the investment you've made in this uh, wonderful competition. I want to wish the people winning the prizes lots of uh, success, congratulations, and may we see the competition next year becoming tougher and tougher. Uh, for us to choose from. Throughout the years, as I've met many people, Jews, non-Jews, who were inspired by Israel, and there's one thing that I've learned. It's never about only one specific attribute, only one specific field. It's a lot of times mainly about the connection, about the combination. It's about the combination between the history and the future, uh, the body and the soul, the, the Talmud and the Discon key. Mm -hmm. It's about that. That's really when you get to inspire someone. Now, yes, there are audiences that are, you know, attracted to a specific field, and this, you know, turns them on in terms of Israel. But when you're able to combine and balance and really present the variety of inspirations that we have here in Israel, that's when you succeed in creating love at first, love at first view, I'd say, in this field. And I believe that that was the mission, and that's what I felt was the mission of these videos, and that is the continuing mission of all of us, to spread the light, but in all of its colors. I know what it takes to make a great video. It's tough work, it looks glamorous, but it really is hard to put this kind of quality video together. And I know it because we put, like Abby said, we put out a lot of social media output. Our Facebook reach uh, at Stand With Us, our weekly peak Facebook reach is 105 million people. Uh, do you guys follow Stand With Us? Yeah. I should hope so. Okay. Um, and, and it really is terrific. This stuff reaches beyond borders, it reaches you know, beyond communities, uh, and touches people's hearts, people's hearts. So it's really very, very special. Our enemies. As we know, Israel's enemies work in the darkness. But what these videos do is shine a light, a great light, on the reality and the truth of what Israel is. And that's what all of you have done tonight in creating the kind of quality and amazing and truthful depictions of this fantastic country. So thank you for all that you're doing. With so much uh, slanderous, libelous darkness being thrown at Israel every day in the United Nations, Israel's attacked more than every country in the world combined, manifold. But I see when I'm watching these videos, they're not defensive, they're not uh, battling negativity. It's coming from a place of inspiration. It's coming from a place of sharing. You know, I remember I was in uh, Central Park, not Central Park, what's 48th and, and Broadway? Times Square. I was walking down Times Square when I was in New York, and there was uh, the black Hebrews were there. You know who the black Hebrews are? There's these black guys dressed as like the Kohen Gadol, the high priest on the Day of Atonement, with the breastplate, with all the stones, and I was walking by and they saw I was wearing a yarmulke, and they said, you there, with that yarmulke on your head, you Jewish? And I said, me? Yeah, you, with the yarmulke. I said, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. They said, you Jewish? I said, I am. And they said, one who acts like a child is childish. One who acts like a Jew is Jewish. 
So whereas you are like a Jew, we are the Jew. And I remember thinking, okay, white flag on that one, guys. That was good. Because the truth is we're not Jewish. We're Jews. And from personal experience, I can tell you what it feels like to be a Jew in the exile. What's a Jew in the exile like? It's like a fish flopping around on the riverbank, gasping for air, slowly dying. What's the memory of a fish? Let's say 30 seconds. Well, this fish has been there for a full minute, and it thinks this is what it is to be a fish, to gasp for air and to slowly die. And then someone comes and puts the fish back in the water. That's the Jew returning to Israel. When we return here as a nation, we remember again who we are, our identities. And then when that inspiration comes within us, we need to share it with each other. We need to share it with the world. And that's what is happening here tonight. There's so much light, and there's so much beauty, and there's so much inspiration. And hopefully I bless all of us and Jews all around the world to realize this is our home. This is where we belong. This is the only place we as fish can be swimming in the water. We did have a lot of fun doing this video, and yes, we are Olim Kadashim. Um, I remember when we moved here, I cried every day. It was really hard. Um, learning a new language is not easy, um, but somehow I did it. And I love Israel, and I love living here, and this is really, really awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. This was a dream. This was a dream of mine a number of years ago. I'm not trying to be Martin Luther-like. I'm seriously just saying it was a dream. Um, uh, I had a dream to allow other creative spirits fly with their creativity to make videos about Israel because I'm not creative. I, by accident, by God's grace, made a movie that then uh, made sure to be seen around the world but uh, I'm not the creative person. But when I saw the importance of the use of media and movies and videos and social media to influence and inspire people around the world about Israel and the Jewish people, I had a dream to set up what was necessary to make it happen so I can help others who have those creative skill sets do that. So this is a dream that has come to become a reality, and a very big thank you to the Adam and Gila Milstein Foundation for allowing this dream to not just take place this year, this is the second year, so really big, big round of applause to the Adam and Gila Milstein Foundation for allowing this dream to, to, to take root and to thrive. Um, I already said thank you to the Tower of David, it's just, just, just unbelievable. It was like another dream to be able to be here <laughs> and have a, have a special, special event, not only in Jerusalem, but in the old city and the Tower of David with all its symbolism. Unbelievable. There's one message I try to give across on social media every day. It's the closest to the truth as I believe the truth to be, the truth about Israel, the truth about our standing in the world, the truth that many Jews are for whatever reason not able to internalize about how special our country is and how special we are as a people. To feel proud of being Jews, to be proud of the state of Israel, regardless of flaws, because every country is flawed. But this is our country, so we're here to we're come home to work on the flaws. Don't complain about them. But it's also the truth about the importance of family. The Jewish people are a family. Our extended family, humanity is a family, every unit is some type of family unit, but then there's also the, 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 uh, the natural family unit, the importance of family, the importance of spending time with family, and sometimes social media pulls us away. It's not always a good thing. I'm, I'm always, always challenged. How, do I really want to be on social media right now? What kind of example am I giving to my kids? But yet, it is a social media world, and they have to know how to deal with these challenges. But I don't want them on right now. It's not an easy life. <laughs> um, but again, it's all about trying to do the best we can, trying to do the best I can. But um, So if anything, a message tonight is take advantage of the tools out there, take advantage of the social media to get the truth across about Israel, about the Jewish people, about the importance of the values that you believe are so critical for you and for us to continue day in and day on and that we want to give over to our
to our children as well, to feel proud in us and, and internalize as well. And last but not least, thank you to my staff, 12 Tribe Films, Israel Video Network, fabulous staff who made all this happen. It's not me, it's all of them. And the other person who really made this happen tonight is my sister, Shira Abelo. We're looking for an event planner. She is a wonderful event planner to have on board and to make things happen. And finally, thank you to all the video creators, all the voters, and to all of you. And with that, I would like to invite up Ariella Zeitlin. Or Zeitlin, please forgive me. And we have special ending where all together I can't think of a better place to all sing Hatikva together here in uh, Migdal David to the beautiful violin playing of Ariella who was in one of the videos as well. <laughs>